solid jobs number at 8.30. Um, the market, the negative reaction in the market is due to uh, year-over-year wage gains were a little bit better than expected, a few tenths. Um, the basic theory there is as wage gains get stronger, it puts pressure on margins at companies, their profits become lower, estimates have to come down, uh, value of stocks go down. So that's the deal with that. Um, do, do, do. So yesterday we went down to this 287, and we bounced a buck and a half. So we're below 287 right now. So it looks like I did buy a little bit initially after the number was announced into 287. It looks like I'm about to get stopped out. But right now 288 becomes the key level um, if we bounce today, first key level right here. We initially failed there on the first bounce in the morning yesterday. At the end of the day, we got through it. Um, now we're well below. Below 287. And 286.40. So we'll see. So at another 50 cents of downside from where we are right now. Um, if we don't pop back above 287 on the open. So you can see initially we caught a bid right there at 287, but we couldn't hold above, let's call it 287.30. So I would have alerts at 287.20, 287.30. To see if, if this is the bottom, we want to see if there's momentum through there. We get back above, then you'd expect to move back into here. Um, IWM, we're right at 170. I think we talked about it. just the consolidation above 170 yesterday. So we're gapping below that now. Or I should say we're gapping below the support from the last couple of days. Have an alert up here at 170.50, We're not there. That's just a print from yesterday. That's where we are right here, 170. If we get back above that, then 171.20 ish. On the downside, this big move started from 169. All right, um, MRVL. So, MRVL, guides down. This one was a little confusing, right? Guides down, the positive reaction. Uh, and in those situations, normally I look for an opposite chart of this, like guides down. You know, I look for something that had been trending lower, and that's why it's popping. Stock that's run up and been consolidating uh, after a big run up. And then guides down, usually doesn't go up. So we had a little bit of a loss for what's going on with this one. But anytime something has unusual behavior, it usually creates opportunity. It's doing the opposite of what you would think in the news. So initial reaction, 2130s. Tesla just dropped the pre-market low. They might have, the news guy might have said another piece of news on it. Was there another piece of news on Cap? Yeah, I think another executive left. Yeah, another executive potentially left. Uh, an HR executive does not intend to return to the company. So maybe we'll go down to the. Uh, well, let's just take a look. We had this on the list anyway. So the April low was down here around 250. So it's basically like you have this, this you know, it collapsed from 300 to 250 in a few days. And then it came down, it did a retest of like 253 or something like that. And then it just ripped to 280. So 
it's got a lot of, I mean, it started down this morning on Must Smoking Pot on a podcast last night. Simplest way to play this is if it flushes down, gets into like the mid 250s, buy something like two weeks out the 275 calls, 280 calls. That'd be a cheap way to play the long side. Um, I just don't see myself playing the short side at these prices. Somewhere close to 270, I would think about it, like up here. What do I have for? Yeah, 270 as my first resistance. It did bounce almost to there. It got to 260, 90. So this was my first resistance, just kind of looking at it bouncing from here. It almost got there, and then 274. Let me get 260. There's really nothing. And below 260 is not a lot to do. I think the way people look at it is if it flushes below, and then got back above 260, kind of what it's doing right now as I'm talking to you. People would watch to see if it can stabilize above that. So you can see this was the HR exec not returning. They, they hammered it. This was, they hit 100,000 shares. We've got a pretty good range to work with now. Looks like after it failed above 268. Let's call this the resistance band now. And we'll see if this starts to act as a support band. Let's call it 258 to 260. ATR is $12. So one ATR would be from here to here. See, it was pretty wild down here. It's the bottom to 252 and popped it back up to 268, which is kind of where they sold it fit the bounce fields just now. Um, it tested again, bounced back up there. They flushed it through, hit everyone stops below 250. It bounced that day intraday to 260, and that was it. It never went to below 250 again. But this is pretty wild. It went up and down like in a 10 to 15 dollar range, like a few times in a three day period, and then ripped up to 300. So we could be in store for that type of volatility. This is for more experienced traders. But yeah, if you're, if you're short the stock, you're, you're pretty happy right now from the 300s. Yeah, CPD is putting out a statement on the third and held 258 the first time. So we'll see. Sellers still firmly in control. And negative headlines. Pretty nasty. Um, let's go back to MRVL. So initial reaction took it to 2050, and then it dropped to 19, probably on the negative guidance. I'm at a loss for why it's uh, up here. Let's see what levels we got. So if we go back to early August, double topped up here at 22 and a quarter. I have no idea why it would even come close to this, but it's acting foolishly. So I would use 21 as an inflection. Um, it failed a couple of times up here, 2140. Uh, if it starts to hold below 21, play it on the short. What do I have for support on there? 1950. Here. So this was the low a couple weeks ago. And also bounced. It actually shot through and then bounced. That's. And this 2050 is a little bit interesting as well. Um, normally it does 8 million shares. You know, it's going to trade 20 million shares probably today, 15 to 20 million. Um, it should be very liquid. Um, the next one is FNSR. This, on the other hand, beaten, raised, and this one ran up a lot. 
So this was down during the summer in the 16 area. In the spring, it was all the way down at 15. A lot of accumulation here in the mid 16s for a couple months. So you can see initially it ticked down, but it held the prior high support area. And it tested, it looks like it ticked up here to 2050 and failed. So this is kind of the range, 1880 to 19 support, I put that on the sheet. I put 19, 1920. It's actually, it must be from the last week or so. I see. Yeah, coming into earnings, there's accumulation at 19 and it held a little bit above there. So that's why I give this band this potential support. It really is all the way down 1880. This is the area to look to buy it. The only reason it wouldn't hold there is just because this is not that big of a run up, really. It's like 15, 10%. So it should hold this. Um, we'll see if it fails above 20 again. Back above 260 Tesla. These are my two resistance levels. This is my support area. This is the range I'm looking to trade it initially. Um, OKTA. So this is another big boy stock. This is going to be difficult. Um, here's the 30 minute and back below 260. Okay, so this isn't a huge uptrend. Was at the beginning of the year a $30 stock? In this channel, peaked above it. It's peaking above it again. So really, the question is, what is the numbers here? So they beat this quarter up by 10 plus percent, and they raised revenue guidance for next year 4 percent. So and they're moving to the cloud. So that's the good. It's like you know, anytime somebody's it's cloud-based headlines, that's another positive. But it looks extended to me. Trying to see how many upgrades it got in price targets. $75 price target, need him from 58. Another $75 price target. Cancord raised the price target from 60 to 75. So all the analysts are positive on it. Um, I would say any type of failure, it's failed at 71. You're now selling at 70. Any type of failure on the open where it just can't hold above $70, I would short it. And what do I have for support on this one? Nothing till 64. But failure at 70, first thing I would do is look, see if it comes into like kind of two, three dollars, cover some risk, and see. It's possible I could just do one of these where it just it holds it and does go up for real. But first thing I would look for is a failure um, at 70. Um, and then if it fails and comes here and doesn't come up that hard, and then is consolidating here, you want to build into a, a, a long position especially if it's holding above, let's say, 69, this, this flag right here, um, that would be fine. Um, but my first thought is to see if it, it falls apart because of the run-up, even with all the, ooh, Tesla 256. So it's trying to get to 250, it looks like. Um, so that's that. ARWR, this one overshot to the upside. I thought 21 was an overshoot. It actually got to 2240 intraday. So, I mean, we were looking at it down here at 18 in the pre-market. Um, it flagged above 20 and then had another leg above 22 before it finally started to come in. Um, I played it for a move back down to 2050. And then I flipped it long into 20. It sold into this top right here and then I wasn't around for the rest of the day. Um, it tried to, I mean, it looked like in the afternoon it was going to, Maybe try to make a run at the highs again, but failed. I think a bunch of people bought into this consolidation, got caught, 
and you can see it started to hold below 20. Um, got some upgrades this morning, I think. Um, if they dropped it out right on the open to kind of this area right here, I'd give it a shot on the long side against 1870. Um, so that's that. I wanted to quickly go through some market leaders, Facebook and Baidu, and then CGC, which is the pot leader. So on Facebook, um, I've already actually got a script in to buy it. If we go back to when it bottoms before earnings, it was like in the 157, 158 area. So right here. So I've got a script in to buy it on a flush down into this area here. And then if it bounced three or four dollars, I'd sell half and then hold the rest as a swing. So that's my thought of that. It's like anywhere, you know, between like 157 and a half and 158 and a half. And then you want to see it get back above 160. The more conservative trader, if it's the bottoms there and gets back above 160. Um, yeah, Twitter also at 30. I got stopped out of most of that yesterday with Twitter. I'd look at it 30 as well. Um, and then Baidu. Oh, Baidu. Why the fuck did I put Baidu? I meant Baba. So Baba below this, it failed at that 165. Had nothing to 160. It got there yesterday. So I just wanted to point that out that it broke in there and came into the next support level. Um, if this wasn't a China name, I mean, it's, I definitely think from a longer term perspective, it's a long down here. I and mean, really the question becomes how much more below 160 is it gonna trade? Um, if it flushed below 160 to through yesterday's low, I'd actually start to nibble. And then if I saw it consolidating back above 160, I would add to that position. Play for a bounce back to here, sell into 64, 65 some, and then hold some for a bigger picture trade. So that's it. It's getting close to the open, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna call out a meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. And then the other thought was CGC. So this was 30 before I left for vacation. Um, this was the big, the multi-billion dollar investment here from STZ. Um, I still think you can look at this as a long, as long as it's really not breaking through this area here. This was the original high, 48, where it came off $6 in one day, then they started accumulating it at 43, and it broke out kind of to stay here above 46 and a half. But 47, 48, um, this area here, it's worth seeing if it can hold. Yesterday, it did actually hold there. Right in the open, and put in the low at 48. You can see people were looking to buy it. Made a higher low here. Um, the key is gonna be, you know, does it continue to get bought in this area here? And then if it starts to have some closes above 50, you would play the break back above 52 and a half.